Hello, and welcome to Monumental, where we sit down with entrepreneurs, leaders, visionaries, and big thinkers making monumental change. Here's your host, Evan Holliday. Welcome to Monumental. I'm your host, Evan Holliday, and today we have on the show with us, Robert Martinez. Robert, great to have you on the show, man. How you doing? Man, it is an absolute pleasure to finally connect with you and be on your show. Congrats on the success of your show. You're doing an amazing job. I look at your guests and uh, I'm just honored to be here. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Robert. I really appreciate that and really, really pumped to have you on today. Um, so uh, a quick little background on Robert before we get started. He is the CEO of Rockstar Capital, an investment and multifamily property management firm specializing in the acquisition and management of value-add opportunities in Texas. Currently, they have a portfolio of over $348 million in assets under management. And as the CEO and founder, he directs the investment strategy, sources the investment capital, and secures the appropriate financing. Uh, and also, as a side note, I, I honestly, Robert, I love the, the rock star theme and the branding behind everything that you're doing. Everything is rock star related, and I love that. Yes. Thank um, you very much. Yes. So... As a quick, quick side note on that, why don't you give us like, what is the, the mindset behind naming it all uh, the rock star theme? So the origin story. Yeah. So there's a lot to it, uh, but that I, I had a management company with a business partner uh, before. And of course, when you're, you know, you have a partner, but you are basically the two headed monster, you know, and it doesn't really become your company. It's a shared company. So all the ideas, you know, it's a, it's a morphing of stuff, right? And one of the terms, though, that I, that I use uh, when I would describe somebody's performance, and now this is based in between 2007 and 2011, I would use the term, man, you're such a rock star, you know, and it's, it's so long ago now that I can barely remember using it anymore, <laughs> but I know I did, and, and I, it got synonymous with that. And so when he and I went separate ways, I, I, brought, I recruited over a young lady uh, who I met when she was 18. Uh, I trained her, I groomed her, I developed her. And when I started Rockstar, she was like, you know, employee 001, right? <laughs> and she was the one that I, many times what I would often refer to her as a rock star. And so I give her credit for helping me uh, come up with the name because, you know, that's where it got coined from, from, from my perspective was, was performance. And she was synonymous with that. Um, that young lady, Melissa, now runs our portfolio. She's 30 years old. Uh, she's chief operating officer. She is uh, running, well, $360 million now an asset value, 3,700 plus units, you know, and, and it's behind every one of every decision that we make as we grow. So it, it's been an amazing ride. That's, that's phenomenal. I love that. Um, well, why don't we, why don't we jump back and kind of give our listeners a little background on who you are and how you got to where you are today? All right. So again, my name is Robert Martinez. Uh, I got into real estate back in 2007. Uh, I have an engineering degree from Texas A&M. Uh, I was taught to go to school and get good grades like everybody else. And I did that. And I got into the workforce. Um, I was really good at it. I was a sales guy, right? I didn't have a 3.8 GPA on the engineering side. So <laughs> what do you do? You become a sales guy. You're, you're you know, just enough to be dangerous. And so uh, a company recruited me to go out and speak to their um, engineers uh, uh, in oil and gas. And I did that for the better part of 10 years coming out of school. Um, and uh, uh, if any good sales guy worth his weight wants to, you know, knows he wants to get paid in commission not in salary, right? Because you want to be rewarded for your efforts. You want to be compensated for what you kill today. You're going to eat tonight, right? And that's my mindset. I'm going to, I don't eat tonight unless I kill something during the day. And so, um, but the biggest way to decentivize your sales guy is to play with his commission and monkey it around. And any guy, anybody listening right now that has a sales background knows exactly what I'm talking about. You get a territory, you cultivate it, you grow it and you expect to be able to, to, you know, pick from it every year after that. Well, your employer has a different mindset. He, he doesn't want you to make past this number. Now you should be making this number, but you're over here and I want to be here. And after a few times of that happening through restructure or management change or whatever, uh, I realized that, you know, the game's fixed and uh, you can't make what you want to make. Um, also my, my expectation and perception for myself were too low. And I didn't know that at the time. I look at that now, you know, 
um, how my mindset changed uh, much later in life. But I knew it wasn't right. I knew it wasn't what I wanted to do. And so I got involved in thinking, I want to do something different. At a minimum, the supplement, what my employer was not giving to me that I rightfully earned. Right. So I looked at different things. I wanted to be a business owner, but I didn't know what. I wanted to maybe buy a coin-operated laundry machine, or I wanted to be a coin-operated water vending, or buy some sort of a convenience store, or a subway, I mean, subway, something. I didn't yeah. know what I wanted to do. And I, you know, like a lot of guys that I've got to know, stumbled into real estate. You know, um, I think mentorship is a big piece uh, when you're starting a new venture. Uh, it's there to prevent you and to help you from making mistakes that cost you money. And maybe in the end, cost you the new venture, uh, which I've seen happen. So I lucked into um, uh, a real estate club here in Houston uh, that had a pretty good track record. I, I visited with them. I got to know uh, players within the company. And next, you know, we're getting involved in our first deal. Um, but the mentorship there was good because I got to like talk to other people. I got to network. I've got a good sales background. So I know how to shake hands and kiss babies. You know, I know to get my questions asked and answered. Um, and then just the opportunity to actually go and physically touch the asset, physically talk to the staff, you know, and, and get an idea of what it's like to run an apartment building. That gave me the confidence to work with a partner. Uh, at the time, I would never have another business partner ever again, uh, but I did then. And, uh, um, and it was what I needed to get started. He and I ran up to 2,000 units uh, between 2007 and 2011. Um, didn't really win any awards, but we were really good at what we did. I was the operating arm. I, I sat in that leasing chair learning the business. And it was so uh, um, intoxicating to me, you know, how I was able to yeah. just like add valuation. As you know, how you can change the valuation of a building by leasing another unit right. or saving a dollar here or adding a dollar here, you know, to what something I call the magic formula, which I'll be, I can go into with you later in the, in the show. Um, but I got really good at, at teaching my team how to sell. And my thought was that if I can sell a $500,000 piece of equipment to a guy with a PhD at the plants, at the chemical yeah. plants in Houston, I certainly I can teach somebody 18 to 22 years old, 24 years old, how to lease an apartment to somebody yeah. making 30 or 40,000. It's the same principle. Yeah. And we got really good and we, we made quite a bit of money, did um, uh, some 100% refinance events. I'm very proud that we did those during the recession. When somebody says you, when everybody was saying you couldn't do it, we were doing it. Yeah, um, it was tough, but we were doing it. So in 2011, I, I parted ways. I brought Melissa over, and we started Rockstar Capital. Uh, today, as I said, we've got uh, 21 assets. I bought 23 assets in my lifetime. We've, we 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 uh, sold two of them, um, and uh, they're worth 360 million. We're based mostly in Houston, but we've expanded down to South Texas, where we've got our our first Class A properties. So we got about 500 units down in uh, Corpus and Kingsville. That's phenomenal. And so when you, when you first made that leap into multifamily investing and, and joining the real estate club, did you, did you go full time right away or did you kind of do that part time on the side while you were still the salesman? Yeah. Well, you know, every good sales guy knows you have some time during the day, you know, if you're not really knocking on doors and once they kind of, you know, Peter, my sir, a little bit. I, I, I realized that, you know, you're not going to give me full effort. I'm not going to give you full effort, right? Because I'm not going to get compensated. I'm going to make this yeah. and you're not going to be making any more. So I had time during the day and I was able to spend my time ed getting, um, uh, educating myself, being at the property store. Where I didn't want to leave. I wouldn't get home till seven, eight o'clock at night because <laughs> you know, I wanted to stay there and I wanted to just learn and grow and teach the team. And every moment I was there, I was moving the needle in my life. And so I did that and I moonlighted doing that. So I kept my day job, I uh, made six figures uh, uh, and, and, I, and I spent my time when I wasn't at appointment and even when I should have been at appointments over yeah. here, getting ready for my next, my next phase of life. And uh, it, man, it, it was intoxicating. I just could not get enough. And finally from, um, it was in April of 08 that I was able to basically walk away from my day job I walked away from a six figure salary to make about $32,000. That's what we were making at the time. Yeah. But I could see the growth plan. I knew what we were doing. I, I, I had uh, everyday involvement. You know, why I wasn't making it dollar in, in dollars in the wages, I was making it on valuation in the business. I was also understanding where we were gonna go. And so I'd make it back. And so, you know, the moral there is anything in life that you read that, that changes your life, you have, it comes with a little bit of a risk. You know, I walked into that real estate club with a buddy of mine and we were going to kind of do this together. And he got cold feet. He didn't want to pay the fee to join the club. And today he's in a very different spot than I am. Hmm. You know, his life That's did powerful. not change the way I did. Uh, and we walked in at the same time. Uh, same intelligence level, uh, same family structure, 
There was no differences except that he just didn't take that dive. And then you brought up a lot of great points of, you know, first off, the um, not, you, you don't need to just jump in the deep end and, and do this full time to make a good living at it and, and get you well situated to be able to leave and do it full time. Um, you know, being able to do it on the side is a great way and it is a way that a lot of people get started in multifamily investing. Um, and the other thing I would add too is that the fact that you said, you know, you, you, committed to it and you also gave up the salary the significant salary you know same situation for me I you know gave up multiple six-figure income and even you know fees that I would have made down the line I had to give those up to leave and so that's something people got to realize is like if you really believe in yourself then you know that that income you give up is more than worth it because what's on the other side of you owning your own business of you controlling your destiny the lifestyle um, the income, you know, the impact, all these different things are on the other side of that uncertainty. Well, we all live in this big square, right? We all live in a bubble. And it's the people that get out of the bubble, the people that step out of that square, out of the safety of your comfort zone is when the real life changes. And that was a prime example of when he decided not to join the club because he thought the fee was too high. And I said, no, I'm going to do it. And I, I took advantage of the opportunity. Um, along with that, I think you also have to be ready to fail. And you have to be ready to, to, uh, to uh, learn those lessons, right? Because it, it, you're winning tomorrow based off your failures yesterday. End of the story. You have to, nobody's born knowing everything. Nobody's born knowing that you're going to be good at this. You have to go through your trials and your struggles. Yeah. Um, I'm a two-time national owner, the country's only two-time national owner of the year. But I wasn't born with that. My dad didn't, didn't do <laughs> property management. He didn't show me how to be an apartment owner or an investor. I learned that. That was from the lessons, right? And being able yeah. to understand how to move the needle on my business, how to move the needle on my life. And so and I'm very proud of that. I mean, again, there's, there's thousands of guys that do what we do, right? And yet there's only one guy that's won that national award twice as being the owner operator of the year. And, and it's, a big, it's a big thing that I hang my hat on. Um, our company is full of those kind of awards. So I mean, we've won 17 city state national apartment association awards. You know, they only give wow. one of those out and we've won it like 17 times in different categories where it's a na national property of the year or property of the year at the, the local level or somebody's winning, you know, regional of the year, you know, that, that's all, we, we, it's, it's, it's all hard to do. Right. But I'm, ex I'm excited to have found something where I not only do I have passion, but I can inspire the rest of my team that they can hit their own. Yeah, personal. that's powerful. So yeah. it, what, what is the secret sauce behind winning that? And then and then a second question would be, what has been the, the benefit to you and your investors for those awards? The secret sauce to winning it all is not winning it all by yourself. That's the secret sauce. Nobody want you should not want to be at the top of the mountain because you want to be with somebody there that you can slap them on the shoulder or in the back and say, hey, remember this, remember that. Because yeah. if you're not winning in a, in a team, you're really not winning. You're not going to get your team's best effort or they feel that you don't believe in them or it's all about you. Um, I try to give the majority of the relationship to the other person. Tell me what's important to you. Let me help you. Tell, you trying to buy your first house, yeah. I know people that can lend you the money. I know how to fix your credit. You want to buy your first car, I can show you the ins and the outs. You yeah. want to get the right kind of financing, don't get a 30-year P&I. See if you can get a five-year, seven-year arm and do it interest only because if you're buying in the right areas, the property's going to go up in value regardless, right? So live as cheap as you can, take that extra money, go somewhere. Those are lessons that somebody has to teach you. And I've been very fortunate that when I've done that, I've invested in other people, um, it's come back to me in spades. You know, I'm a big believer in you take care of those who take care of you. I don't know if you saw the recent post that I had, right? But, you know, we just sold a property we bought in 2012 and we sold it uh, in December. And there was a young lady that was there for five of the seven years and was there when we had the biggest jump in our valuation. Uh, and I think we paid like 2.8, 2.9 million for it. We sold it for 8 million. Wow. Um, the investors made 673% return uh, on that deal. And that young lady was a big reason for it. You know, uh, she got a promotion, she got a raise, uh, and she got, uh, uh, she's running a new group, a new internal focus within our company. And I heard through the grapevine that, did you know she doesn't have a car? I go, what do you mean she doesn't have a car? Well, she lived really close to where she was living at, where she was working at before at the, as the property manager. And she was Ubering everywhere. And I'm like, wow, wow, you were Ubering to take the new assignment. And she rationalized in her head, like, well, it's kind of like having a car payment. You know, it's paying me, it's costing me X amount of dollars per day, what have you. I'm thinking, what? 
And so once I found that, I was like, I was called to help her in what, in what way we could. And we surprised her with a car, you That's know, a, a new car for her to have. Yeah. And it not only did it make me feel really good, it, 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 it did, it, I mean, can you imagine the game changer that was for her? Yeah. Now she doesn't have to pay that three, $400 of car payments slash Uber rides, you know, that she can now have that as discretionary income. But the fact that she was willing to do it because it's what was required, that's what I want. I want to surround myself with heart. I want to surround myself with people uh, that maybe don't have the skill set today, but they have the heart because you're born with it or you're not. Yeah. You know, you're going to run or you're not when times get tough. And she's had plenty of, of uh, struggles at that property uh, over the years and she turned it around. She made it one of the property, one of the country's most respected reputation manage, management scores in the country, uh, earning three years in a row in the top 1% for reputation management. And, and, you know, it's the least that I could do, right? So that's the secret sauce is not winning alone. Yeah, that's awesome. And it, and it speaks to your culture. I mean, you're building a culture that, that builds on taking care of your rock stars and, and cultivating rock stars, both your employees and, and your properties and your, your culture within that company. That's yeah. powerful. No great talent in our company was ever, was, we were just, you know, found. It, was, it wasn't found, it was, it was created. It was grown internally. It was groomed internally. And that's why they are, they are the way they are because they don't take no for an answer. They don't quit on you. Times are going to get tough. I want someone that's going to guard my back if we go to war and not someone that's going to run. And I've been very blessed that I surround myself with those kind of people. Yeah, that's awesome. So speaking of which, how, how big is your team now? We've got about 110 staff. I've got about, geez, I want to say like 20 on the corporate team. Wow. Uh, it's, it, it's an, it takes a village. Yeah. You know, it is an animal. And it, it's quite a bit different, right? Because when I got started, it was to be an independent owner. I just wanted to buy one deal a year, mm -hmm. one deal a year. And then next thing you know, we're like, hey, you know what? I think we, we can do more. I think we can, we can do something different. Uh, we were starting to win a little bit of awards. I'm like, wow, let, let's, let's challenge ourselves. So we started, we bumped it to four a year, right? The first time it was four smaller deals. And then we changed it to like, well, no, 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 unit counts better. Let's go two bigger deals, right? So uh, over time, that's what we did. Uh, the majority of our growth uh, has been in the last four years, uh, uh, but we've continued to have financial success. We've continued to, to still win those awards. Because in my mind, you're winning the awards when you're hitting your expectation level for yourself. And if we stop winning, something's wrong. Now, they, the fix could be in, and people don't want to see you win anymore. Um, <laughs> I saw my own father go through that growing up where he was so good at what he did that they stopped winning. The, they just retired the award because nobody could ever win it. Um, and I've seen that. But I, we have our own internal metrics on what's good enough and what's not good enough. And so I, I want to grow as long as we maintain the quality standards. That's great. And so how have you, it sounds like you've really like systematically grown this company. How have you been able to, to make that happen as far as from the very beginning of like first acquiring those properties to where you are today? You know, that's the evolution of life, right? Is that, you know, I, I thought I was going to buy one deal a year. And then along the way, I started getting a little bug. Like, I think we can do more. But you know what? I don't want to fail. So I started to like read up a lot. And I'm not a big reader, but I love social media and I love <laughs> watching different people. And I got influenced by Gary Vaynerchuk and oh, Grant yeah. Cardone. Uh, and when I watched them, I was like, wow, it made it so simple. It was like the layman's way of understanding what to do, right? Because we are our own judge. We overvalue everybody else's opinion of us instead yeah. of doing what's right for you. People have failed in their life, not because they weren't good enough, because they overvalue somebody else's opinion. And when you realize that it's only you versus you, and it always has been, stuff starts to click for you. You know, you yeah. start to move that needle. And that's what happened with us. Our, our needle moved as a company when I realized that. So the last couple of years has been a lot of fun because I feel like I'm playing chess. You know, I feel <laughs> like I'm upgrading the board. You know, we've now recruited talent today that not only could we not have afforded four or five years ago, would never want to come with us. We're too small. We yeah. weren't offering it enough and now through social media and through the awards we've won you know, it's my job to sell the company it's my job to promote it and that, that's a grand cardone message right promote or demote and now we have something to talk about and as you do that you get people's attention you know and again you're going to get fans you're going to get the ire of some other people right but that's part of the business you know if you're not doing anything good enough no one's going to comment on it anyway right and so it, it's been a, an evolution for me um i love trial and error i love going through things you know i like to win as much as the next guy but i know that i need to lose today if i want to win big tomorrow and so that's what we're doing you know we're we're, we're reimagining what this was started to be 
you know, I've, I've gone through life changes. I've gone through a lot of stuff. Life is very different today in 2020 for Robert than what it was back in 2011. Um, and most of it has been really good, but because I was willing to extend myself, willing to have some faith and confidence. You know, when I got started in 2007, 2008, I didn't have the faith in this. I needed a business partner. I needed someone to hold my hand and yeah. with me. Mm -hmm. And in the end, I, I probably didn't need it, uh, um, it, but it's what I needed to get started. Yeah, you and needed so it at that time in your life. That's right. And so everybody's a crutch, right? But then you got to realize, I can do this alone. And so the company now takes on my personality. It takes on my, 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 uh, my thought processes. And I love it when we're in conversation with a team and somebody says something and I'm about to answer and somebody will say the exact same thing that I was thinking. Like, yeah. that's the solution. And I'm like, yeah, now we're sharing the same brain. And that to me drives me. You know, our goal is to get to 10,000 units, right? But it's not a long-term goal. It's going to come pretty quick. Um, but man, it's, it's more for the ride. I mean, I have what yeah. I need. I have the money. I don't have to do this anymore. I could retire and literally move to an island if I wanted to, but I, I don't want to. I, this is a joy. It's a journey for me. And I really like helping my team out because I've got several members who now are investors in the deals that we run and manage, right? Oh, I mean, that's just think awesome. about how much more effort you might get with that, right? Where yeah. they have their own equity in it, that they've been able to grow from not having the equity five years ago to now having the equity to invest with you and seeing it grow and like being a part of it. And, and it just changes the culture of your business. You know, and, and that's something that's just, you know, I, I fell into like, I just didn't know. I just always did what felt right. You know, yeah. I, I, I've got pretty good EQ and I think I just do what, what feels right to do. That's powerful. And it, and it sounds like exactly what you're saying. I mean, you're, you're each step of the way, you're doing it because you love it, not because you need to do it. And especially where you're at now, I mean, that's powerful. So, so 10,000 units, I mean, you're at what, what'd you say? 30, 3,700 plus. 3,700. Yeah. So, so what does that road look like for you and how are you guys setting out to accomplish that as quickly as possible? Well, the key is infrastructure, right? Because the, the key and the weakness to that is people. And you've got to make sure you have the right people. We've grown this business. Uh, people that uh, are in positions um, need to be reevaluated all the time, right? And making sure that they can get you the best that they can. And if not, they need to get a little retraining, right? Because you, you, you have nobody else four or five years ago that wants the job and they come in and they take it and they grow, but you know, you still need training. You need their other people. So we recruited some, as I said, we have people now today that work for us that any company in, in the city of Houston would love to have, but we couldn't have had them four or five years ago. So now we got to make sure that the infrastructure is right. They're coming in, helping us with training, helping us change the dynamics of how we are. We've been able to achieve all of this success because we had a very micromanaged kind of approach, but it can't work like that to get to 10,000. You got to have more independent thought. Uh, you can share the same brain, but I can't be responsible for every single action. Yeah. You know? uh, and neither can, can my COO. So we've got to make sure that everybody around us um, can think independently, but still stay within the spirit of what it is that we're doing. And so um, that infrastructure has to be there for the 10,000. There, as you know, there's plenty of deals. Deals are not hard to find. Uh, there's, I mean, we've, gone, we've underwritten 40 in the last uh, 60 days, right? And only issued out two LOIs. So deals are easy to find. Uh, uh, it's hard to get one, but they're easy to find, you know, but when that time comes, you got to make sure you got a plan ready to go and you stick to your business plan. You don't deviate from it. It's what you told the investors and your staff needs to understand you cannot deviate from the plan. If the plan is to put washer and dryers in on every move in that you start, spend the money and do it. Don't wait a year. And then now the, where's the money? The money's gone. You had it and it, we asked her for yeah. it. Now it was used for something else and it changed the business model, right? So making sure that uh, the infrastructure is there and everybody's on the same page. So what, what advice would you have for somebody that's going for their first thousand units if oh, they're wow. getting started and they're, you know, they're, they've maybe had some success, but they really want to crank it up a notch like you guys are doing? Well, the mistake that I made was I grew too slow and because I bought too many small deals. I was very good at the 100 to 150 unit mark. And the yeah. reason for that was that I believe that if I can limit anybody between the manager and the residents, then I'm going to get stuff done. You introduce a system manager, you introduce this, you introduce that, you know, then you introduce problems, right? It's like when, when you want, well, how's that, uh, that game go where, you know, the grapevine game where I tell you a secret, yeah. and there's five people between me, by the time it gets back to me, it's not what I said. Well, the mistake that I didn't understand was that I was micromanaging it. I didn't trust people because I was afraid, you know, I, I, it, they, I, and it was afraid because I didn't have the resources to pay for the right kind of manager that I wasn't afraid of. So unit count is everything. It took me several deals to get to 10 to 10 to 1,000 units. 
Today, it would take me about four at most, yeah. right? Because size matters. Size is important because the more doors you have, the more you can sustain a slowdown. Size matters because the more doors you have, the more income you generate. And when you generate income, this is an offensive game. When you generate income, you have more dollars to pay for a better manager. You have more dollars to pay for better marketing. A $1,500 apartments.com ad is the same on a 300 unit property as it is on a 100 unit property. Yeah, same ad, they don't exactly. give you a discount, right? So it gives you options. So size is everything, size matters. Once you realize that, you can get to a thousand a month faster. You may be scared with, oh, it's just too big, I don't know if I can handle it, but that's what your manager is for. And if you get the right kind of manager, and that will be dependent on price, if you can afford the right manager, she'll yeah. make you or break you. Because you have to understand, these people sitting in that chair are running multi-million dollar businesses. And if you get the wrong manager in the chair, oh, yeah. you're, done. you're done. But if you get the right one, as I did with the Maplewood deal on, on the 2012 deal, you can make lots and lots of money. I mean, think about that. 673% return. That's a 96% IRR. You know, so if you gave me a dollar in 2012, I was giving you back essentially 96 cents back every year. That's better than the stock market. That's better than anything. I, I love Donald yeah. Trump. I think he's an amazing yeah. president, but he can't make the stock market <laughs> sing like that. You know, but in real estate, you can, yeah. right? Because the magic formula is everything. Income minus expenses equals your NOI, divided by your cap rate, and that's your new valuation. So every dollar you make is worth $17 of new valuation. Every dollar you save is worth $17 valuation. Put the two together, your $2 now is made $34. So to put it even in an easier approach, a $10 rent bump on a 200 unit property for 12 months divided by a cap rate of six, cap rate of 0.06 is worth $400,000 of valuation. Yeah. Just 10 bucks. That's nothing. That's not even a nuisance bump. People expect to pay a rent bump, right? But if you can do that at the $30 or $50 level, now you're really seeing it. Now you're up to $2 million. Or if you can find a better uh, uh, service contract or find a way where, most importantly, your residents do, don't move out. As you know, all the money you make in real estate happens when they renew, not when they move in. When they move in, you got all your expenses. When they renew, you spend nothing, right? And so that's the key is customer service, resident yeah. retention, and then having your residents go in and uh, sell your story for somebody else. Don't be afraid of asking for surveys. Don't be afraid of, of getting opinions because that's how you're going to get better. It may not feel good when you're hearing something negative, but it's your job if you care about what you're doing, your reputation, to fix it so that it doesn't happen again. Create a defense against what against what's occurring. Yeah. Well, so many nuggets right there. Um, <laughs> I, I would say the first I want to start with is is what you mentioned about the the um, magic formula, what you call it. It's it's mind blowing. Like when people learn this you know, that aren't in multifamily or just getting into multifamily, learning how, you know, a small, small change in your rents or your NOI or your lowering your expenses, whatever it is, like that can have exponential impact on the actual value of the property and what you could turn around and sell it for. Well, by uh, a factor of 17, think about yeah. that. A dollar equals 17. Yeah. That's crazy. You can't add a dollar to your single family house and create $17. Yeah. But you can add a dollar valuation in the apartments and create $17. That's just, it's mind blowing. You, you, you're, you're an experienced real estate investor. You know exactly what I'm saying. There's a not, it's not even a fortune. It's just, it's a different way of living. And, and, you know, we both have uh, backgrounds that were not really related to this initially. Right. And you're wondering like, why are they, don't, why don't they teach this in school? Like, but you don't know, you just don't know what you don't know. Yeah. Yeah, it is so powerful. And I think when people realize that, it's like the glass shatters in their mind. They're like, like, wow, this is the power of multifamily real estate and also the power of large numbers. Exactly what you said. Like, you know, it's same on development. It takes the exact same amount of work to develop 40 units as it does to develop 240 units. So why, why go through the extra effort of having to do the same thing six times over or just do it once and get the same result and you can cover your expenses. You can, you know, cover any unforeseen costs, just like you had mentioned. I mean, that is the power of these bigger deals. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, and, it, and it's really weird. I always call it like, like, like the matrix theory, right? Where you take the red pill or the blue pill. And once you know, it shatters your perception, what reality is. And if you know that you can make $17 for just $1, wouldn't it be your life's mission to do that? Yeah. Wouldn't it be your life's mission to try to make everybody stay? Like the biggest way to, to move that needle is resident retention. You know, making sure people renew and they yeah. don't move out. 
where you got to start the whole process over again, right? So everything we do is with the residents, you know, thoughts and, and, and you know, opinions in mind. I want surveys. I want to hear the ugly. I want to hear the good. And when you find that out, you can correct it and people will stay. So, and I, and I love that you brought that up because I, I think a lot of owners don't talk enough about that is you're exactly right. Like one of the biggest ways to lower your costs and, and also, you know, get the phenomenal reviews, the, the awards is to actually like pay attention and take care of your residents and make sure they renew instead of move out because you know some little thing you didn't take care of that you could have taken care of so so walk us through a little bit of what you all do to to create that environment of like your your residents are just proud of where they live well number one is i want to make sure that basic services are taken care of the number one reason why somebody moves out is because of maintenance and everyone maintenance headache is air conditions every renovation project we do is we we change out the air conditions and I don't care how old they are. If they're, if, they're, if they're more than two years old, I want them gone because I want them under my name. I want them under yeah. my warranty with my vendor. And I'm going to eliminate the number one reason that when people move out, it cannot be uh, 84 degrees in Houston, Texas in your apartment yeah. and it's 104 outside. It's yeah. not going to happen. They're not going to renew. And there's a lot of bad owners out there, which is great for me, right? Because I'm yeah. going to make sure that that AC is fixed. Water pressure. I'm going to make sure water pressure works. I'm going to make sure the boilers are good. Uh, hot water, changing all that. Continuous service. I think yeah. internet and, 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 and Wi-Fi stuff is next on our list, right? Because I have some, some uh, properties where um, the, the cell signal is not very good. And if the cell signal isn't good, they're going to move too, right? Yeah. So I want to eliminate all the basic service issues, number one. Number yeah. two, I want to service them and I want to know what they want. Right. I want to hear from them and I want to understand their opinions. And I want to understand what it is that they like and don't like. And I want to double down on those. So we're very big on resident amenities. Uh, we're very big on outdoor areas where they can hang out. I mean, it's yeah. great to their apartment. And I think we do a really good rent ready, make ready apartment. But, you know, be outside. Enjoy, you know, create a community feel with with your neighbors. So we put a lot of money into, into outdoor areas, barbecue pavilion areas, the playgrounds, just places where people feel like it's a community, right? Because think about it, this is where they're going to be having their lifelong memories. Yeah, exactly. Anniversaries, marriages, they're going to be under your roof, right? And you want to make sure that that is the best memory that, that they can have. So we focus on those, number one. And then I want their opinion. I want them to say what what they feel about you because that inspires others to move in as well. Yeah. I'm very proud that our company has had five uh, communities this year make the top 1% of all, com hmm. of all communities right in the country for resident satisfaction. That's number two in Houston, uh, number two in Texas. Like there isn't any more, right? The guy above me is Gray Star. Wow. And they have seven, they have two more than me and they got 160 some properties in yeah. Houston, right? So. That's what an owner operator does. I don't third party manage. I, every equity is in my deal. I have a feel for it. I know what they want. I yeah. know what, how it's going to be. I'm not going to rely on somebody else. You know, I, I can't. I'm just not built that way. I have a type yeah. eight kind of control personality. <laughs> it needs to be this way. You know, uh, and so those are the big benefits, and those are the the things that separate us and our brand. Yeah, from, I think most others is that we're going to take care of the residents. That's, that's amazing. And I, I think myself, I got a lot out of that. And I know our listeners are going to as well. I mean, just, you know, if anybody listening, it just takes a little bit out of that and says, hey, how can we actually pay attention to residents more and pay attention to their needs and be proactive and, and also get them involved in the process and creating something where they're proud of where they live and they want to share it with other people. And that's where you really like your property hums both from uh, an impact perspective and an investing perspective. Well, it's a pride of ownership, right? Yeah. You have pride in yourself or don't you? And then, and, and then what does your team feel about it? They see how you're acting. They yeah. see how you're, you have a zero tolerance for some stuff. They're going to react accordingly. So it's going to be a trickle down approach. And then guess what? Then you win the awards. What pride do you think occurs within me, but, not, but then within my staff? Yeah. Right? Our company's called Rockstar. We have a lot to live up to, right? <laughs> you got a big name, you're drawing attention. Yeah. Uh, and then you actually win the awards. That fuels further uh, uh, wins. That fuels further uh, growth and further further successes. Um, and so it's a nice chicken and the egg thing. It's just kind of continuous circle that goes around. So again, I wish I could tell you that I'm some sort of like <laughs> Harvard and came up with this, but I didn't. It just being a, a, a people person and understanding what makes the needle move. Yeah. That's amazing. 
Um, well, going back to what you said about, uh, you know, meeting up and learning from Gary V and, and Grant Cardone, how, how did you make that happen? And what did you take away from that the most? Right. So I discovered uh, Grant first and I was mesmerized by his whole sales concept, right? And the promoter demo, but I wasn't sure I was ready to do that. And then I wound up finding Gary afterwards and I'm like, whoa, I love it. Storytelling, content creation. Yeah. So I was very fortunate. He came, I was in one of the earliest classes that he had on his, uh, his uh, 4D thing where he, you know, you could pay 10 K and come up and spend a whole day with his team. And, and he'll, he'll give you like, he'll hang out and have a, two hour lunch with you and you get to ask questions. And I was just so inspired by it. So I realized that storytelling was a big piece of what we do. Storytelling yeah. what I do on an everyday basis, storytelling what the team does and what the communities look like. And so, and then I got back into grants and I got into like, wow, now I have something to talk about. Now I got something to promote. So I was able to, to kind of put the two together, right? Because, and then I coined up my own phrase, everybody has a brand. Some are just more well-known than others, but why? because Budweiser has the biggest budget and you think that's the best beer. Yeah. But as you know, there's probably plenty of craft beers out there that don't have that marketing budget, but you don't know about them, but they're better. Yeah. But you know about Budweiser because they had the commercial on the Super Bowl. They had to do this to do that. So I love watching Super Bowl commercials because I like seeing that entrepreneurial guy, the guy that comes in Dollar Shave Club several years ago yeah. and then doing a commercial and then selling the Gillette for three, for a billion dollars or whatever it was three years later. Uh, that inspires me. I love seeing that stuff. So I learned that uh, from Gary that we are a sales company. I'm sorry, we were, we were a, um, uh, uh, um, a, a, a sales, co sales company from Gary and Grant. You're a sales company first before you're a property management company. That was Grant. And then you got to tell a story, right, with Gary. So, you, you know, you have to like become that before you become a property management company. And you combine the two and now you got something really deadly. So I was very fortunate. I've been able to sit with both of them and visit with them, get personal mentoring for 30 minutes, an hour. And I, I love that I brought my kids with me. They got to meet him. Uh, they got to get, you know, like a little, like a exchange of gifts, pictures, which for them will go a long way because I think it'll inspire them yeah. uh, when they get to be a little bit older on, on what to do, what not to do. Um, books, man, I, I, I read uh, both their, all their books, but I think um, you have to be in a different frame of life when you can really absorb it. I heard Rich Dad, Poor Dad when I was uh, much younger than you and I did nothing with it. I listened to it, I literally threw it, I was on a long drive, I'm like, this is dumb. I threw the cassette out of my window when I was driving. Wow. I thought it was the dumbest thing ever. I went back to it later on, probably 10 years later when I was actually <clears throat> ready to understand it. And I'm like, wow, this makes all the sense in the world. Yeah. So I, I got a lot out of their books and I've read them at different phases of my life. And man, the message is, is so great, especially with grants. You know, a uh, 10x book was a, a game changer. Yeah, for me, for me as well. What was another game changer where you got it? And now I have my teams reading it, right? Because I want them to understand the method behind the madness, right? Well, Robert's you know, lost his lid. He's doing this. He's doing that. No, you yeah. need to understand why. Because we got one life, you know, and, and that and that's a Gary thing, right? But you got one life, and you got to make it happen, or you're not. And yeah. I'm not going to be 80 years old, wondering why I didn't do this and I didn't do that. I my regrets, my biggest fear. I, it, it fuels me every single day. I want to move that needle. I, I don't want to live in the past and I want to move forward. Yeah, that's powerful. And then, you know, don't complain if, if things aren't going your way or you're not having the life that you want right now. Just take it's action. All yeah. It's all, yeah, it's all up to action. And as you know, massive action. Yeah, I love that. Um, well, what about, so I re saw you post about, you're doing an event with Tarek El Musa from HGTV. Um, I've seen him tour some of your properties. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So, you know what? I, I learned this from Gary and he actually told me this when I was, uh, we visited with him in, uh, I think it was January, February of 2019. And he said to me, he goes, you know what? If you're good enough, the market will find you. And that is so true. You know, I've been plotting and quiet for years and years, just building my portfolio. Yeah. I discovered both of them and got into the idea of storytelling and promotion. And then what do you, you know, social media is paying attention. And yeah. they go out there and they, they see who's going on. And we were making a little bit of noise. We we're talking about our accomplishments. And uh, I DM'd uh, Targ just, you know, he was on somebody else's feed. I'm like, why is he on that feed? Why isn't he, why do I not know him? He knows this yeah. guy that to me is at a different level than me, you know, and I, I think he would get more value out of me. Well, he DM'd me like almost immediately. Like the guy was like listening because he wants to network. And, uh, uh, and I was like shocked when he, when he DM'd me. And next, you know, that was in like around July. And then by October, he was visiting us and coming over here. And I, you know, I did a whole story on it. It was amazing to have 
uh, someone at that level, you know, um, with that kind of credibility come visit with you yeah. um, and, and share uh, what they know with you. You got to basically show what you do and your team's accomplishments. And uh, it was an amazing ride. And so now we decided we're going to partner maybe on, on some future acquisitions. So um, I'm doing a bus event, uh, which is called rockstartour.com. Uh, you can pay, I think it's 129 right now. And you get a ticket and that ticket gives you all day access on a bus with me and Tark and you come uh, tour four of my award-winning properties. Wow. Each of these properties has returned over 100% to their investors. Each of them is ranked on the top 1% in the country for resident satisfaction, and it's 129. I mean, I don't make any money. That, that, that's based on just yeah. the cost, right? But I wanna grow, and I wanna help others get involved in real estate investing. I want Future Equity to help us grow our business as well. So it just seems like a really good way, a, a synergistic way to get to 10,000 units. And so we're going to have that event on February 27, 28 in Houston. Uh, if you're around, you should come hang out, man. I'd, I'd love yeah. for you to be there. Yeah, definitely. And, and guys, everybody listening, take Robert up on that. That that sounds like a steal to be able to, you know, have direct contact with him and Tarek and, and spend the day touring properties. That seems like a well, he massive was coming, education. The average, like, you know, a fee is like $50,000 to get him to come keynote something. And, you know, I'm the country's only two-time national owner of the year, right? Where are you going to put those two guys together yeah. and get, him in the room and get your real estate questions answered, you know? So it's an all-day bus tour, but then on February 27 is a meet and greet where you just get, get to meet the team, you know, handshake, kiss babies. And then on 28, we'll do a general assembly. We'll go through a deal. We'll, we'll introduce you what it's like to be an investor and potentially work, work with us. Yeah. That's amazing. Well, Robert, I feel like we could keep going and going. Oh, I know we could. Uh, let's, uh, let's jump into our monumental questions. Yes. So what does success mean to you? <sighs> Making sure that it, when I look back on life that I, move the needle in my life that I don't live in regret, but that I've also helped everybody around me as well. You know, as I told you before, you, I don't believe you can be successful alone. And if you can, I don't want to be that person. I want to get on top of the mountain and I want to know that everybody around me is there with me to help me get there. And yeah. we're all patting each other on the shoulder and reminiscing on how we got there, helping see how I've been able to change their lives. Hopefully maybe in some cases their family tree and, and, and inspired them for something that would not have been there before. So for me, that's success. I have what I need. I'm, I'm financially yeah. secure. I just want to know if I can hit these crazy goals that I have in my head. <laughs> and I, and I know you will. That's awesome. Uh, what about daily habits or morning rituals? You know, I've noticed that if I, you know, I, again, we, we have a virtual office. So my kryptonite is that I can stay in my apartment, you know, cause I got this crazy view and, and I can just sit there in front of my computer and do anything. But you know what, like anybody else, I can get lazy and I can get distracted. And so I make sure that I have as many appointments in the day as much as I can. Right now I'm 30 minutes, 30 miles away from my home. Right. And I purposely had these appointments in the afternoon because I knew I had to see the guy to do my head to get going. I try to cram them. So there's no time for me to be at home. If I'm going to be home, I'm not going to be moving that needle. I'm going to be lazy. I'm going to go slow. Uh, I'd rather run late to an appointment than, than, than not have the appointment at all. Right. And so mm -hmm. uh, I want to do everything I can to move the needle. I don't want to live here. I want to live there. And that, and, and, and that's uh, paying homage to one of my favorite TV show suits, uh, which is on USA. Uh, <laughs> the key uh, uh, guy, his name is Harvey Specter. Yeah. He's like Jack Bauer in a suit and he's amazing. And uh, um, that's what it is. He says, I don't want to live here. I want to live here. And that inspires me. That's awesome. Um, so wrapping up, what about your favorite book or book you're currently reading? You know, I told you a little bit about them. I, I think the game changer in my life was Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Uh, when I joined that real estate club, uh, when I was in my early 30s, uh, it was a giant Rich Dad, Poor Dad book that had come to life. And networking with people, uh, sharing stories, basically being around like-minded changed my life. It was, it was an amazing, amazing uh, situation. Um, and again, I told you the story how I had a friend who and I, he and I walked into the real estate club at the same time, you know, and, and he walked out. Maybe had he read the Rich Dad Poor Dad book and understand what they were trying, the message they were trying to say and how real estate could change you, his life would be different today. But, you know, it, it's a little bit different. Uh, I, I think reading Gary and Grant's books were amazing. The 10X book, understanding that everything takes 10 times more effort. Every goal you hit should be 10 times bigger. You know, my goal was to get to 1,000 units. That was my goal. And it's yeah. funny how now my goal is 10,000 units, right? Because yeah. what is you create, when you say it and promote it enough times, yeah. it creates a pathway to get there. I come up with answers. I wake up in the morning and sometimes a problem I've been having or something I've been saying, uh, uh, the solution comes to me. And I'm like, 
it's so simple. Where was that solution two weeks ago? Where was that solution <laughs> a week ago, right? And I think what's happened is that you simmer and you marinate on how I'm going to get to this goal. I don't know. The, make it the biggest goal ever. And, and your body, your mind will find a way to get yeah. there. Uh, and then, of course, obsession. I love obsession because it's, it's you know, it, 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 it takes an obsessive attitude and behavior and to be a little bit selfish yeah. to get what you need. And I've learned a lot from that book. I, I've been able to share that book with my team so they can understand, you know, it's not a mad scientist thing. It's just a shift in thought process and, and how we need to uh, uh, all share the same brain. And, and so we can get all get to the, to the goal at the same time. So those are my favorite books right now. I just picked up Tony Robbins. I've never had Tony Robbins books before. I've never even read them. It's very interesting, The Power of the Mind. Uh, I think I might be on his podcast coming up soon. So I'm looking forward to that. And I got to brush up on that. Yeah, that's phenomenal, man. I love it. I love everything you're doing, Robert. This is um, this has been a, a eye opening podcast episode for me, and I know our listeners are are going to get massive value out of this. So I really appreciate you for that. Well, thank you very much for being on your show. I know you're doing amazing things with this show. As as I said before, I've seen who you have on the on the show before, and there's some amazing talent out there. So to be among that is just my honor and privilege. So thank you very much for having me. Yes. So how can our, uh, how can our monumental listeners reach out to you or connect with you? Absolutely. So you can go to the apartment rockstar.com and that is basically my personal page, which has all of my video, all of my content, all of our, all of our achievements. And, uh, you know, and you can learn, right. I've got a big YouTube uh, page where I post a bunch of stuff. So, um, um, I've got an Instagram page called apartment rockstar and of course on LinkedIn. Yes. And, and make sure to go follow him on Instagram. That's where, I uh, connected with Robert and, and he's putting out some awesome content over there as well. Yeah, I, I love LinkedIn. I love it because you can say what you want and do what you want. It's a little bit different than Facebook. I've noticed that I get better engagement on Instagram, Facebook. They just want to see pictures of your kids and, yeah. and, and, and vacations. You can't talk a bunch of business there. LinkedIn is all business, right? But yeah. it's a different kind of person. On Instagram, it's everybody. and It's just like a free for all. And I, I, I enjoy the vibe there a lot. Yeah, I do as well. Um, well, guys, if you are listening right now, Make sure to share on social media, tag Robert, tag myself. Let us know you're listening. Let us know what your favorite part of today's episode was. And do not forget to subscribe and review Monumental on iTunes. And guys, with that, have a monumental day.